advantages in a sense of college football is that you have these big squads and you can play a lot of people and get them the experience as you pointed out earlier. Well, I think that's how you build tradition. I think that's why you see a lot of transfers come here and want to play for Joe Gardy because they know if they wait their time, Joe Gardy will get them in the game. Bears complete. And a little shake and bake move over there by number three, Ivan Fitzgerald. I want to thank our statistician tonight, Hal Sass, doing, as we mentioned, his usual brilliant job. Spotting tonight, Jamie Meyer for Hofstra and Stu Honing. Doing a super spotting job for the Bucknell Bison. Clock ticking with 2.25 to go. Pichetti is the running back now. And that one nearly picked off. Folks was the intended receiver down around the five-yard line. You, you might question, why is, is, is Hofstra throwing the football now? Why not just run the clock out and finish this football game? I think that's the same question that Lou Manasana is asking right now. Why are you still throwing the ball on me, Joe? But that is what the run and shoot is. It's a, it's a, it's a throw the ball type of an offense. It's not like Joe's trying to run the score up. Daryl Folks, number 46. You know, he's just keeping with his game plan. Here we go. We're looking at uh, Lou Manazana. He's got to be frustrated. He's got to be embarrassed. He wanted to come in here, make an excellent showing. But as we talked to uh, Brian Hennessy today, he said that this man is professional. So he's going to take the loss in a professional way. You'll see him come over and shake hands. He'll lick his wounds. And he'll go back to the drawing board tomorrow. Well, Hofstra has well gone over the record. 70 passes tonight. The old record was 58 against Wagner. As we've got time out of the field. Hofstra, 43. And Bucknell, 7. I have to cancel. I keep canceling. I have to cancel. Why do you keep putting it off? Mother, I'm not... GE's breast cancer detection system. I keep meaning to. Did you go? I'm too busy. Hofstra, run and shoot. Well... <laughs> why are they rushing this offense is a good question. And our producer, Director Larry Roth, has addressed in our headset here. Knocked down. <laughs> Larry Ross says we're trying to make him look bad. Well, the one thing we've got to commend Larry, he's done an excellent job tonight. He made the job a lot easier for us up here in the booth. And uh, Larry, you've done an excellent job. All right. There'll be a payoff on that one later, Marty. Well, as soon as we find out where Carl is. <laughs> where has he been the last 10 minutes? He's lining up his guests, I'm sure. Bears. Pichetti fumbles it into the end zone, out of the end zone, and it should be a touchback. And so Bucknell will finally get their hands on the football. And this game may eventually end here. So the ball will be moved up to the 20-yard line, one of the few mistakes that Hofstra has made here in the second half. As Bichetti just could not handle the handoff there. And uh, Greg Coverdale will remain in at quarterback. Hofstra would have liked the shutout, I think, tonight. Greg Gigantino's defense has done a superb job. And uh, again, that was one of the question marks. Could Hofstra replace the big five that they lost last year? Coverdale on the draw to Vargo. And Vargo brought down. After a short pickup, he had an outstanding spring. Good hard runner in the mold of uh, Brian Hennessy. Brian Hennessy had a good second half and I believe finished uh, with over 103 yards. So he's well on his way to breaking the all time rushing record. Under a minute to go. Overdale screening it out to Kevin McElvain. McElvain stepping out of bounds, stopping the clock with 44 seconds to go. I'd like to thank also tonight uh, the sports information directors of both schools, Bo Smolka from Bucknell for his help. 
and Jim Sheehan, of course, here at Hofstra. McIlvain will leave the ball game after coming up with an eight-yard reception. Don't forget, after the game, to stay tuned, Carl Reuter, and try to grab some of the Hofstra personnel and find out their reaction to tonight's big win. Vargo, some nice moves into the secondary, close to midfield. 19-yard pickup for the junior from Milton, Pennsylvania. Clock will stop as they reset the yard markers. Mark it at the 39. Well, Barry, I think we came up to the last play of the game. <laughs> I think uh, Lou Manizan has had enough. He wants to take his boys home. They're going to go right back to Lewisburg right after this one is over. Now they averted the shutout. As we mentioned, 51 games in a row. They had scored at least some points. And this is it. Clock ticking down. As Hofstra's move to 1AA. A very impressive debut tonight. This is one of five 1AA opponents this year for Joe Gardy. They'll play three Patriot League teams, Lafayette and Fordham, along with New Hampshire from the Yankee Conference and Towson State and Independent. As Joe Gardy goes cross field looking to shake some hands over there. Buffalo, the Bison, has got to say, we were shocked here tonight. I mean, last year was no fluke. Well, I think that Hofstra just came out and outplayed him. But you go all the way back to the opening drive of Bucknell. They fumbled when they could have scored seven. Might have changed the tempo of the game. Big problem for Hofstra. They lost their number one, number two quarterback. But you got to be impressed with, with Basil, and you got to be impressed with uh, Dodo. They both came in, did an excellent job. Joe Gardy said, hey, you know, I, I don't want my boys to get beat up by moving up a division. He lost two quality players tonight. And again, it was that defense, which sometimes gets overlooked when you have a high-powered run-and-shoot offense that turned the game around and held uh, Bucknell to seven points, and albeit a controversial touchdown pass. Joe Gardy is heading over to chat with our Carl Reuter. And let's go down to the field right now as uh, Carl has a very happy guy ready to chat to me. Well, you can't take the hat off Joe Gardy. Now, during the course of the week, uh, of course, the good start on a date with Destiny, you said you were trying to get an assessment of this club. You didn't really have a good read. Do you have a good read on them now? Well, I did. I think <laughs> they're a good football team. I'm really pleased about the defense because they come out hitting and dominating like they did last year. And offensively, uh, we lost our first two quarterbacks. This is a costly win now. Yeah, I guarantee it. Timmy Lynch could be out for the season. George Beisel may need 14 stitches. And our young freshman, Mike Dodo, come in did a heck of a job. We're a big play offense, as you can see, but that's kind of scary. I, it's a great win against a good football team, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I've got mixed emotions. Wow, you lose your two quarterbacks. But the key is the defense played super. And our, our offense, uh, we've made a lot of mistakes, penalties, which we did last year, and we, we got that kind of a score. Let me ask you something. I know you're a defensive guy, and they, and they did really play a good, solid football game. It looks like they could have had a shutout, questionable call, but how about the offensive line? One guy in particular, because he's coming off of that tough surgery, Chris Cameron. Did you look at him closely, Coach? Offensive line, I said all night, gave our quarterback, our young quarterback, Mike Toto, great protection, great time, and that's a key factor and this offense going. Now they got smacked a few times, and most of the time it was because there was good coverage downfield. I think it's we were worried about our O-line. We were worried about our D-line. Both of them seem to come through flying colors. It's a good first win, I'll tell you. I'm going to mention a couple of names. First, Mark Cox, and then Scott Millington. Yeah. Well, we tried to get Scott the last touchdown down here because it would have been a record, I guess. And Mark Cox is just Mr. Everything. He probably, the only thing, he, he's going to sweep up these cups <laughs> on the turf. That's the only thing he doesn't do. Uh, they're just, and Millington didn't practice much. It's amazing how he came and had, but he's a gamer. That's what it is. I can ask you another question here about the team defensively for Bucknell. Did you see them panic at all in the no huddle? Because you kind of shocked everybody by coming out with that. Not only did they not panic, they knew exactly what we're doing. They didn't even break a sweat, which makes me wonder, Marty, 
You know, there, there might have been some skunks in the belfry during the past couple of weeks. I can't believe it. They didn't even break a sweat. Uh, they knew we were coming out in it. Give me the explanation. Next time I'm barring everybody from practice <laughs> next year. Give me the explanation. People are going to look and see what the score was with a couple of minutes running down on the clock and they're saying, Joe Gardy's throwing the football. But your answer was going to be, that's the run and shoot. I'm going to tell you something. We didn't do it last year. And we, hit, we ran 40% of the time. My poor AD, Jim Garvey, had seven teams drop them because we ran up the score. So what good did it do? So we're going to have, we had our young, young men in there, our second and third team. If they can score, they're going to score. And I learned that from Mouse Davis. Let them have fun. And that's it. Maybe. Go have fun with your team. Congratulations on 1AA win number one, a date with Feels Destiny, good. Joe Gardy. All right. Thank you. All right, Coach. So Joe Gardy walks off Hofstra. Undefeated in the early season, 1-0 with a 43-7 win over Bucknell. When we return to Hofstra Stadium, Hempstead, New York, Barry Land is Marty Lyons with a final word. Very, very good outing for the Flying Dutchman as they move into 1-AA. Well, Barry, we talked about Hofstra having the power on offense, but I was impressed with the play of their linebackers and the play of their defense. Bucknell got things going early. But Hofstra's defense, they bent, they didn't break, they had the big turnover down by the goal line. And then every time Bucknell got in a third and one, third and short situation, uh, Hofstra's defense came up and just stuck them and got them good field position. Great intensity, that swarming defense, really a key factor as far as tonight is concerned. Next week, Central Connecticut, a Division II team, maybe a little letdown, you think, for Hofstra? No, I think a big decision right now for Joe Gardy. Who's their starting quarterback? I mean, all four quarterbacks played tonight. They all were successful, except for Tim Lynch. He went out early with an injury. Now Joe Gardy has to go back and don't let your team get overconfident because it's only the first game of the season. You're only as good as your last game. Right now, that they've got to prepare to play next week. All right, once again, the final score tonight. The Hofstra Flying Dutchman, 43, and the Bison of Bucknell, 7. Remember, tomorrow night, the 1991 Canada Cup continues as the Soviet Union...